It can be said America has a love affair with meat. Land is dedicated to it. Fields of crops are fed to make it. Towns are built around it. Awards are given for it. Some may even say meat is worshipped. But the world may be joining the love affair. Population is on the rise. Are U.S. producers ready for the challenge of feeding the world? Can industries keep up with demand while staying within the limitations of the environment? Consumers know more than ever about their food. Can the global appetite be satisfied in a way that is palatable? Or will new alternatives set the table? What is the future of meat? Feeding the world. In the Midwest, that's a phrase you hear quite a bit. This is the world's breadbasket, but it's also the meat counter. Putting meat on plates across the U.S. is already a huge undertaking for the agriculture industry. Keeping that up is going to be a challenge. Coming up, we'll hear about how meat shapes the Midwest, why producers are trying to control their carbon footprint, how consumers are influencing animal treatment, and what kinds of meat could be on your plate in the future. But first, let's set the table and look at the business of making meat in America right now. A lot of other U.S. industries have become less made in the USA. But red, white, and blue consumers can usually count on seeing these labels on their beef, chicken, and pork. That may be part of the reason the U.S. consumes more meat per person than almost any other country in the world. But global population is on the rise. It just passed 7 billion and is projected to reach 9.6 billion by 2050. Along with that, the global middle class is rising. And that's important because there's a simple rule that humans follow. The more money a country has, the more meat its citizens eat. So countries with historically low meat consumption are going to be eating more. Americans already play a big role in feeding the world. The U.S. is the number one exporter of poultry meat, and thanks to a huge increase in demand from China, the number one exporter of pork. In beef exports, number four, behind India, Brazil, and Australia. Meat is already big business in America. Can it get bigger? We're going to project forward now. Meat demand is a very interesting part of the global food picture. In fact, it's one of the most fascinating parts. Thomas Hertel spends a lot of time thinking and talking about the future. Specifically, the future of food. I think if we want to look forward four decades, we should look backwards four decades. What Hertel sees in the past is promising. Since the 1960s, global agricultural output has tripled. And while doing that, the land dedicated to agriculture has increased very little, less than 20 percent. There are issues related to that, but it is nonetheless a remarkable accomplishment. And the question is, can we keep that track record up? The answer to that question starts in the present. The story of meat is in towns like Lexington, Nebraska, where not only do they eat meat, but they rope it, wrestle it, and ride it. Lexington is surrounded by ranches and feedlots that raise cattle and fields of corn and soy that feed them. Not only that, but this is where thousands of cattle come each day to be turned into ribs, loins, chuck, and rounds at the Tyson Meatpacking Plant. Tyson employs over 2,700 people in Lexington, and the influence can be readily seen on the demographics of this town of 10,000. There are some things I can do to help me learn English. Immigrants from places like Mexico, Ghana, and Sudan come to Lexington to work at Tyson. At this community center, new residents are taking English classes. I say yes. Everything. I can do everything. The main that I come here is to get a job. Omar Ahmed learns English during the day before the late shift at Tyson. 